Um, the new album has more instrumental music on it, and it's pieced together more carefully. As a whole, it's conceptually a piece of art, as opposed to the first album was more getting the music out there, you know, just for people to hear. Um, spent a lot of time working on this new album, many, many months of just pages and pages of notes that I wrote out to figure out the exact order that I wanted the tracks in and the feel that I wanted the album to have, you know, the music flowing together. Um, went into a very, very amazing studio um, called Black Bear, which is down in uh, Gainesville, Florida, and we put so many hours in there just to get the exact sound that we wanted, and I'm very proud of this album. Um, really excited to be taking it on the road and offering it. Yeah, so um, looping in stereo, I have two different amps that I'm using. Um, one is a PV Blues amp for my guitar, and the other is a custom-made violin amp by a company called Acorn, um, based out of Florida. It's an amazing sounding amp. And the cool thing about it is, when I have these two amps on a stage, and I'm looping in stereo, so the guitar and violin's going, it really creates like a blanket of sound for the audience to just kind of be encompassed in. And it's, it's, um, in the past, I had been running out of one amp. I didn't know how else to do it, you know, but things have been getting more and more complex for me because, um, I'll just reach limits, and then I don't want those limits anymore, so I have to find ways to push it even farther. Stereo looping is not very popular. Um, it's just not very common. Um, it's hard to pull off. It's really fancy pedal that I use to do looping. Um, and um, the trick is, when I perform live, nothing's pre-recorded. So um, I kind of just set up presets ahead of time, just to like know, like, okay, things are going to fade in or fade out or whatnot. Um, but I run a electric violin through, and I run that through a bass pedal, which is really cool because then it makes the violin sound like a cello at times. Um, and then on top of that, I have the guitar, and I run them through an effects processor. Um, so I have a lot of control over the sound I create. But everything, like all the sounds are presets that I've spent hours and hours slaving over to create so that when I perform live, I can create a seamless show, seemingly seamless, but I've spent a lot of time mastering it so that I can on the fly work with it live, you know, without it seeming like this map that I've created, you know, like I can actually improv play off, you know, without having to worry so much because I've spent so much time behind closed doors working on getting what I consider the perfect sound for to all my dear friends. So um, when I got into looping, it gave me a chance to, an outlet for that. I could write music in a special sort of way that still had my orchestral influences, but then I could blend in like jazz and rock and classic rock and blues into my sound. And I could take that out to bars or art galleries, you know, or DIY art spots and play my music for people. And, 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 you know, kind of trick them. Basically, I'm playing classical music for them, but they're enjoying it, you know? And I love playing it. And um, that kind of brings me to the reason why I do this music in the first place. Why do I write this music? Why do I play this music for people? And um, it's really simple. I just... emotional response. I'm just trying to evoke emotion in people that, in this day and age, everyone's so jaded supposedly, you know, and I I get such great response when I play for people because I really feel connected with my violin. I really feel like I can express myself with the violin and so people come out to shows and they listen to my music and people have told me it makes them cry um, and in front of an audience like that, you know, that people can, can let themselves break down like that and shed away, um, that, that really, really makes me excited and that's what I'm really looking to create an environment, an atmosphere, almost an escape from reality. When I go to see a lot of live shows myself, I don't get that always, you know, the music can be really, really awesome, but I'm not feeling like I'm not getting the full package, and I would look at artists like Sigur Rose, for example, who I've never had the opportunity to see live, but I've seen videos, and they just blow my mind what they do visually. And with the music, it just creates this amazing experience, and I just feel like, I, I, I just 
feel encompassed with it all and all the art and everything and they really know what they're doing and so I decided I wanted to do something like that so I always project visuals at shows a lot of bands don't do that they'll just go to a venue and they'll play and they'll deal with whatever lighting's there when I get to a venue I say cut the lights I'll handle it and so I've created um, a projection of kind of somewhat synchronized visuals to go in my live performance to bring it up on the, to a higher level than it would be otherwise. Um, and that gives people really a chance to get caught up in the music, you know. I want someone to walk into the room, never have heard of me, and stop dead so in their tracks. Kickstarter.com is uh, an amazing website that's getting really popular these days. And I wanted to go on tour, I wanted to release this amazing album, but I didn't have any money to do it. So I did a 30-day fundraiser on there and managed to raise $3,600, which basically paid for the tour, merchandise needed for the tour, and my new album. Um, yeah, and it got me on the road. It was amazing. The, all the music um, for Tell My Dear Friends is available online, many sources, iTunes, Amazon, all that stuff, you know. Um, but you can also go to tellmydearfriends.com, a website that I created and I'm very proud of. You can check it out, see what I'm up to. I have a blog on there um, that I update regularly. And um, where else can you find me online? Facebook, you know, all those social media. I don't tweet, I don't do that stuff, I'm not into it, you know, but I do keep track of Facebook and my website, I'm a big fan of, I keep that updated regularly. And you can buy all my music online, like I say, on iTunes and Amazon, CD Baby, all those websites.